Like the daylight, your love has rescued me. Now there's a fire burning in my bones, can only need my heart as a new soul. A relentless melody. Oh, I am a soul set free. My God's alive in me. Something will sing, it's something. I'm singing about freedom, singing about mercy. I stand forgiven. My soul is being redeemed. About freedom, singing about mercy. I stand forgiven. My soul is being redeemed. Oh, I am a soul set free. My God's alive. Something was singing, something was singing about. Whoa, now not even the grave will steal this life away. And that something was singing, something was singing, something was singing about. Singing about mercy, I stand forgiven. Oh, it's all because of Jesus. I'm singing about, yes, I'm singing about, oh, Jesus, is something we're singing about. singing about. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll hear more about our musical guest uh, coming up in just a second. But I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Anna. And on this Labor Day, welcome right. to Hope Today. I hope you have rested from your labors today. <laughs> it's great. God rested from his labors and we get an extra day to do that. So thank you for being with us. Tell us about our guest yeah, coming up. We're so glad that you're with us. And I tell you what, our guest, his name is Nathan Sheridan. I had the privilege recently to sit down and hear his story. I was so moved by his heart. So this young man was born into incredible hardship. Like from the time he was so little, he was trying to navigate through hell. And he's such an example of what God can do with a life that is surrendered to him. Like truly, Tom, our lives are hidden in Christ. And it's amazing to see that no matter what has been in our past, yeah. that God could make us a miracle for this world to make such a difference. I mean, I don't know any better def definition of Christianity than God intervening, Christ intervening, intercepting our lives. Uh, along as we're traveling along that, that lifespan, Anna, God intersects with us and changes things, draws us after himself. That's right. 
He's always pursuing you. From the time you were born, God is going after your heart to bring you close to Him. So today I want you to just press in to the, this story because it will be one of hope, one of encouragement that no matter how much of a mess you feel like your life is in, that this will be your opportunity to see and hear what God wants to speak to your heart and what he wants to do in your life. Absolutely, and as always, we have prayer partners available. They're standing by to pray with you 24 seven. They wanna pray with you. You need the prayer. They're glad to uh, take you uh, by the hand and go to the throne room together. So uh, avail yourself of the prayer partners if you find yourself in need of prayer today. Yeah, that's right. Well, stay tuned because my conversation with Nathan Sheridan is next. You'll get to hear his story, his message about hope and hear more of his uplifting music. Stay with us. We know how much our CTVN family loves Arlene Williams. I'm Amanda Brocker, one of the hosts on Hope Today. Deidre shared, I just recently saw At Home with Arlene, who reminded me of my mom. I watched her every day along with many other programs. God bless you all for your time. It's our generous partners like you who help us stay on 24 seven. Thank you, hope happens here. Our next guest has been uplifting others with his gift of music and gives God all the praise and glory. Nathan Sheridan is a Christian singer, songwriter, and recording artist, and he joins us now to share his story of how he overcame insurmountable odds to get to where he is today. So Nathan, thank you so much for being thank here you. with us. Awesome. Um, so your story is so inspiring because you truly did just have a very difficult start like right from the beginning yeah. of life. Can you share with us a bit about those early years? Yeah, it was it was a really, really difficult, um, like you said, a difficult start because uh, me and my sister, uh, you know, our parents really weren't in a great place in life uh, to raise us. They were very, very heavily addicted to drugs. And it was one of those situations where they kind of wanted us when it was convenient, but when the drugs kind of came back into their life, it was inconvenient for them. So it was uh, really, really tough for us. I was only four years old. My sister was uh, five or six whenever, man, my, my mom had sold everything in our house. Uh, and we were always back and forth anyways, you know? So it was always this thing where we're back and forth, back and forth between my grandparents and my parents. Like I said, it was only when they wanted us. And this was kind of the final time uh, my mom had sold everything in the home uh, for drug money. And she called my grandparents in the middle of the night, said, hey, come get the kids right now. I can't raise them anymore. Um, and if you don't come get them tonight, whatever happens, happens. You know, if we went into the system or, or something like that. So it was uh, a big shock to us. And there was that abandonment there. And, you know, after that night, I didn't see my mother again for well over 10 years. So um, it was a really, really difficult start. Uh, and feeling, even at that young age, even when I didn't know it, because that's, something we don't realize is a lot of people don't even realize the trauma they've experienced. And I think I was, um, you know, I, I was putting it out there in different ways and maybe didn't even know that was the reason. Right. But, you know, even at a young age, I was feeling that trauma, feeling that insecurity and that abandonment and things like that. Um, and just trying to navigate through all that. Absolutely, because yeah, you're so young, that's all you knew was the environment that you were growing right. up in and trying to process that, right. I just can't even imagine. Yeah. And so then the shift went into living with your grandparents. So how was that for you to make such a transition into their home? Well, it, you know, fortunately they had been, you know, taking us in and like keeping us for weeks at a time. Uh, so it, it, the transition itself wasn't necessarily the hardest part as it was never seeing my mom again after that. It's just like there was no revisiting that part of my life. And I think for me and my sister both, it was just a huge, I think there was a generational gap. You know, I think there was that generational gap. My grandparents, they weren't prepared really to take us in full time. Uh, their whole life was, you know, they were starting over more or less. I mean, whenever a four-year-old and a six-year-old uh, come into your home and hey, you got to raise them now um, and you just the cards fall where they may and I think for them It was a big shock. So there was a lot of there was a lot of grief yeah. 
and there was just a lot of re-navigating life and you know throwing a wrench in the fire so to speak and for both of us right. so for me for me my sister and my grandparents and then to add on to that your sister got very sick yeah. what happened my sister uh got sick they uh took her into you know different specialists and things like that she was getting headaches and whatnot just just something wasn't right and she ended up getting diagnosed uh, with a very rare form of brain cancer. So this is right after, more or less, right after uh, being with my grandparents and living in their home. She you know, got sick and man, it was a pretty rapid decline. It was something that could have never been foreseen. It wasn't genetic, it wasn't anything. The doctors really couldn't explain it. It was uh, a very, very rare form of cancer that only I think four or five children in the world had ever been documented to have it at that point because it was an adult form of cancer, but in a child, if that makes sense. Right. So for us, it was a huge, um, obviously upsetting. For me, it was devastating, you know, because my sister at that point was the only friend I had ever known, right. the only person I had ever played with. And obviously she was looking out for me in ways that I didn't even realize um, then. So to see her sick and you know, for her to go into a coma and then for her to pass away from that was ultimately just another huge hit for me. It was a huge hit for me Absolutely. and something that it took me a long time to recover from that again in ways I didn't even realize. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was trauma there that I didn't even deal with till I was later, like I right. was older. And so it was trauma layered on trauma yes. on top of trauma. Yes. And this took you into your teenage years where a lot of the just living out in very rebellious ways. But then you heard about Jesus. Yes. Tell us a bit about when the shift happened. Well, you know, I always attribute it to praying grandparents. You know, I, I love what my grandmother did that, uh, you know, because I could talk all about uh, that generational gap and how we fought and the butted heads and things like that. But man, she was a praying grandmother. And I'll never forget when we started going to church. Uh, Again, you know, they had, they had stopped going for a while, but my grandmother wanted to get back into church, and I started going every Wednesday, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and I was under the impression that I was a Christian because, well, my grandmother was a Christian, my grandfather was a Christian. Um, you know, he used to be a deacon in a church, and right. she had volunteered in Sunday school and been, been at church her whole life. You know, she was a Christian, and I heard her pray and sing hymns and all that. I'm like, they're Christians, I'm a Christian. But man, they took me to a play uh, called uh, Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames, and that still goes on today. I've actually talked with the, uh, the owner of that play <laughs> and uh, talked with him about it, but it's amazing. I, it was the first time I had ever encountered the gospel presented in an artistic way, if that makes sense. And I think it makes so much sense for me why it spoke to me so clearly and so, uh, so powerfully in that moment, just seeing my eternity on display and seeing, wow, when I leave here, like I really am going somewhere. And, my soul really does belong to someone and who do I want it to belong to? And it's like, you can't serve two masters. And just seeing Jesus presented to me in that way and knowing that his will for me is that I should be saved and that I shouldn't perish. It's not his will for me to die and that I should, you know, I should live in heaven for all eternity and that he has such a grand purpose for my life and there's a grand destiny for me and that there's so much more than what I've experienced in my life. That was a huge moment for me. And it took, I was shy. So it was like every ounce of, energy and just courage to get up, walk to the front and say, you know what, I want to accept Christ. And I did that at 14. Wow. I mean, as a mom, that gives me goosebumps to hear yeah. about as your grandma listens to you yeah. share and to see where you are today. It yeah. just blesses her so much. Um, okay. So then from there, you picked up a guitar and that starts to bring us into yes. today. Tell us about your passion for guitar and God's calling on your life. Yeah. My, my sister got, got me a guitar at uh, 15 years old. Uh, I have a sister named Tanil, and she was, you know, she helped almost raise me too. You know, uh, I was always at her house, and I, I told Tanil, I said, you know, I want a guitar, and uh, she ended up buying it for me, like a $200 guitar, and I picked around on it, played on it, but I honestly, I never saw myself as a musician. Uh, I never thought that I could really do this for a living, and even though I had gotten encouragement from people. But it actually took me getting, <laughs> believe it or not, it took me joining the military wow. and really rediscovering my love for music, for guitar, for singing, uh, you know, having, my, you know, fellow soldiers, my peers, you know, man, sing us something, you know, play us something and actually getting opportunities on bass to lead worship at a chapel and uh, 
going overseas and leading worship. But when I got to Kuwait and I was deployed to Kuwait, I had the opportunity to kind of cut my teeth leading worship then and just received so much encouragement and support from people saying, man, we love, we love your voice. We love how you play. We love, we love your songs and what you're doing. We really want you to, you know, after you, after you get out of here, you really need to pursue this. And I think just so much encouragement from people is really where that, that all that started to accumulate yes. so much to the point where I'm like, you know, God is speaking to me through this. I really believe that. And I had ignored it for so long because again, I wasn't, I wasn't secure in that way. I just was not, I did not have that much security to say, yeah, I can do this totally. I'm not, I'm, I'm born for this or something like that. Right. It was never like that for me. So man, just encouragement from my fellow soldiers, other Christians, my family, my friends, yeah. uh, and just that, people, people that had ever heard me play. Right, that affirmation Absolutely. from God that this is the path he has for you. So we get to listen to you sing now. We're gonna hear your new single that's called Do You Know. Can you share a bit about the meaning behind that? Do You Know is really, uh, it's about identity. It's about the prodigal coming home. I think for so many, we, we get into this mindset that you know, even as a Christian, right? We are walking along the path God has us on. We fall down yeah. and we think, well, I gotta get up, go all the way back to the starting line and continue on. When really it's not like that. You know, the Father is right there waiting when we're ready to get up and he's got his arms wide open. He wants to throw his best robe on us. Um, and you know, man, we are so treasured by him. He really just, he loves the fact that we exist, you know, and he loves, like the very sound of our name makes him dance for joy. And I truly believe that. And I just know that it's not this situation where we always constantly have to go back to the starting line. He's taking us right where we're at and saying, you know what, just do the next right thing. I love you so much and I'm never gonna leave you. I'm never gonna forsake you. And I think that's the gospel message as a whole. You know, we are kept by him. He's our keeper and it's grace that saves us. Amen. Amen. Nathan, so well said. Thank you so much for being here and Absolutely. for sharing your story. Thank you. And here you get to enjoy the music and worship of Nathan with Do You Know? All the way was the distant doors and desert lands and troubled walls. Do you know? Do you know there's a way home? No matter what it is that hurts inside. Just as you
You know, he rejoices at the sound of your name. What a great song. What a great line. He loves you. He cares for you. God loves you. He's crazy about you. And uh, he uh, gave his life for you that you might know your purpose in life and you might be reconciled back to God. What a great song, Anna. Yeah, it's so powerful. I just moved me so much to, to just remember how much God loves me, how much God loves you, that he will come after you and rescue you and take you all the way home. My prayer for you, friend, is that today you will feel that tug of God trying to pull you closer, that he's saying to stop running and come to me, that he wants to wrap you up in his arms. And I pray that you will get to experience the God of the Bible, the God who created you and has such an incredible plan for your life. And so it's very simple. As he calls you, as he uh, convinces you that yes, he has a plan and a purpose for your life, then open up the door of your life, open up the door of your heart and say, Lord, come into my life, be my savior, be my Lord. I'm going to follow after you. Forgive me of my sins. Uh, we've all done that. We've all done things wrong. You know that. And, and just ask for that forgiveness and that restoration to be everything that you were meant to be, everything that, that God has for you. That's the beginning when you be, say, I'm going to follow you. And God rushes in. He takes up residence in your heart, residence in your life. He fills you with the Holy Spirit. And you begin that journey. You begin a journey that is the journey that you were meant for, is the journey that you were designed for. And so many people, they finally come to that place and they're like, I know why I was born. I know the reason that I'm living. And uh, God wants that for you in your life today. Don't put that off. Give your life to Christ today. We're going to hear uh, Nathan Sheridan sing for us again. And uh, I, I so enjoy his music, and the song is called Again.
marriage isn't easy, but I'm understood completely. And I'd do anything to make her stay. But sometimes you need a little grace. And oh, how the time flies. Where does it all go? And oh, every moment passing by, faster than we know. Oh, God, stop this world from spinning. And rewind it back to the beginning live this life we've been living again and here's to my sister God how I've missed her you know sometimes it feels like We were playing in the yard and counting all the passing cars, but that's been almost 21 years ago. But God has his reasons, I.